We have a story from that often explosive nexus between the personal and the political. It involves hair, specifically the hairstyles of young African Americans and the controversial decision made by one school district that fed into a heated national debate. Here's ABC's Deborah Roberts. As 15-year-old Ashanti Scott knows, hair can say so much about us. A cheerleader at Butler High in Louisville, Kentucky, she proudly wears hers in its natural, tightly curled state. So she was stunned this year when she saw her school's new dress code policy. It was the hair, and I noticed that as you kept reading, it just added more and more hairstyles that were natural and mostly worn by black people. Did it feel personal to you? It felt very personal to me because I've worn those hairstyles. It was almost like an attack on me and who I am and my culture. Ashanti and mom Attica soon became part of a hot national debate around the country about perceptions involving natural hair. What offended the Scots is this line in the new policy, banning dreadlocks, twists, afros longer than two inches, and cornrows, which is even misspelled. Attica, an outspoken and newly elected Kentucky state legislator, immediately called her daughter's school. But it was after hours, so she did what many of us do when frustrated, turn to social media. On Twitter, she wrote, so my daughter had registration today, and let's just say she's not happy about the JCPS no natural hair policy. The tweet going viral within minutes. Now, why not wait till the next day and call the school and try to sort it out that way? Because it was fresh, it was on my mind, and I knew I had the rest of the night to connect to other people who may also have some concerns about the policy as well. And she did. Soon, hundreds of responses, many from parents posting photos of their own children with hairdos that would violate the policy. So I talked to my girlfriends about natural hair. We literally talk about natural hair every single day. The tweet first striking a nerve here in Louisville. I thought about coming to work several times with it out, but I've always decided against it. Would it be too much? But really, what is too much? That same question at the center of a growing conversation about self-identity, with more and more African-Americans choosing to embrace their God-given hair. The natural hair movement is more than hair. It is a lifestyle. It is learning to be comfortable in the skin that you're in. Nikki Wanton, an author and blogger on natural hair, recalls growing up feeling that straight hair was more acceptable than curly or kinky hair. Everything that I saw growing up, magazines, television, movies, people on the street, like people on the runway, all you saw was straight hair, long straight hair. Even women that look like me had long, flowing, straight hair. And I knew that whenever my hair got wet, it didn't look like that. Y'all hate us corny with that Illuminati mess. But today, natural hair has gone mainstream. My daddy, Alabama. Mama, Louisiana. From Beyonce. To Sesame Street. My hair looks good in the corner. Just look at the celebrities rocking their natural hair on magazine covers and even on the red carpet. For the last 50 years, have been told that we were not good enough with the way our hair naturally grows from our scalp, the way our skin looks, our features, our lips, our butts, our hips, our everything. Not acceptable, you know, and to be able to reclaim that and take that back. Um, and say, you know what, I am beautiful, I'm gorgeous, and I don't need to change anything about myself. That's powerful. A perception this father and daughter duo are embracing big time. When I take photos, I feel like a princess. One Instagram photo at a time. Artist Benny Harlem and his six-year-old daughter Jackson have become a social media sensation. Grow your hair, be phenomenal, be fabulous, be exactly who you are celebrating their crowns, as Benny calls them. This is not about photos. This is not about images. It's about inspiring people to believe in themselves. And for him, teaching his daughter to be proud of where she comes from. We should all love where our roots come from, whether it's straight, long, kinky, or not. You know what I mean? Whether it's that or whether it goes down to where her hair goes, it's gorgeous. A message thought revolutionary back in the 60s during the Black Power Movement, even perceived as a political statement. Oh, you had the prettiest hair in the world. Just ask hairstylist Isis Brantley. I go, Wally, Wally. 
She recently hosted a rally in Dallas. African children are under attack. Their hair is being told that it is unprofessional, untidy, unkempt. But her argument may have been lost with a controversial guest, Rachel Dolezal, a white woman who made headlines claiming she identifies as black. I just said, you know, this is a justice issue. As an educator, I have a responsibility to participate in the movement. Though Dolezal, a hair braider, fully supports the natural hair movement, apparently many don't support her. Instead of the usual hundreds who might turn out, close to a dozen turned out for the event. But braids were never meant to cause controversy back in Louisville, Kentucky, says William Allen, principal at Butler High. We're about kids here at this school, so. He says the ban on natural hairstyles was all a big misunderstanding. The language for braids has always been um, in, our, in our dress code. Um, it's strictly for male students. There's never been any restrictions for our female students. Doesn't a policy like that inherently single out black kids? All of our policies are for all of our students. Um, it gave us a chance to take a step back and look at um, culture versus style um, and look at specific, um, specific instances that we have in our dress code policy that might relate to a, to a specific group. Just after Attica Scott's tweet, the school quickly called a meeting. Today, I'm proposing that we immediately suspend our section of the dress code policy about students' hair. Suspending the policy, but igniting more anger. I would love to hear from the students first. They have affected us as an African, um, African American community. Instead of making assumptions, Y'all should have asked. But one black member of the decision board, Sharice Baldwin Trainum, mom of a 15 year old daughter at Butler, says the policy was simply about neat grooming, not offending a culture. I know it sounds crazy, you know, standing here with an African American woman with braids. I was not offended. It doesn't mean that I don't understand the offense. She hopes future issues can be resolved before going on social media. I don't want to live in a world where everywhere I go, I have to see everything as black and white. I don't want to raise my kids like that, but I will teach them to stand up for what is right. I applaud her for seeing an issue and standing up for it. But I think that we have to be very careful about how we address these issues because it affects our children. It's not about intent, it's about how it landed. And the way that it landed for me and my daughter and other students and other parents is that it was offensive and it was discriminatory. But you've got a principal who's black, mm -hmm. you've got a couple of parents on the actual council who are black. Yes. So do you really think that they were out to discriminate against black students? Just because you're black doesn't mean you're not feeding into the system. I work at places often where there are still issues of race. I've worked at universities where there have been issues of race. That doesn't end just because I work there and I'm black. Butler has since changed its dress policy to say that hair must be well-groomed, well-kept, and at a reasonable length. A positive outcome, say Ashanti and Attica Scott, and hopefully a lesson, they say, that will resonate beyond the classroom. It's not about one school. It's about the public school system and the way that it's policing kids who are trying to get an education. They just want to come and learn. For Nightline, I'm Deborah Roberts in Louisville, Kentucky.